service in full is electronic fiscal receipting and invoicing solution. So it is an invoicing receipting solution made for the benefit of the taxpayer and the tax administration. It is not a URA uh, tax collecting system like e-tax. No, this is something that you deploy for the benefit of your business, but also for transparency on the side of tax. This IFRIS can be deployed through different ways. One of the ways is system to system integration. So system to system integration is not different from IFRIS. IFRIS is the technology. One of the ways of connecting to IFRIS is system to system integration. What does that mean? It means the business has an accounting or uh, sales management system. And URA has its system. Now, what we do, we integrate our system with your system. It is real time, it is instant, and it is the most preferred way for every taxpayer who has an accounting or sales management system. To you, please deal in products that have paid taxes. Every bottle that has paid excise duty has this small stamp here. If you see on top of Ruenzori, you'll see a small digital stamp in black. If it does not have this, reject it. Because if we find it in your business, you'll be penalized for stocking an, uh, an item that has not paid tax. So support digital tracking solution by ensuring that the wines, the sodas, the beers, the water, the sugar that you buy has actually paid tax and it has a digital stamp on it. Embrace IFRIS, embrace all the other initiatives that will bring for technology. It will make our lives easy and yours. And tell you, like the statistics I gave you, that many hotels were hit hard. Many hotels were hit hard. Many closed and some have not even opened yet. You are struggling to get back on your feet after the pandemic. Here you are struggling with loans in the bank. Here you are struggling with the 25 taxes and licenses. And on top of that, now comes these systems as you had. Every system, system to uh, system, withholding tax, uh, the appointment of uh, withholding tax agents. So we thought it's important to engage with the Commissioner General and because we know that he's an implementer, but also he's an advisor to the government, whether what they are asking him to implement is viable. So we truly appreciate because uh, he gave us his time. He came with his team. They answered most of our questions. And now we have follow-up actions to set up a committee where URA will be part, uh, Uganda Hotel Owners Association, UTA, Uganda Tourism Board, Minister of Finance, which was represented by Mr. Neitwe, and we can now engage at a higher level because changing the tax policy, which is a law, needs legislation. It has to be involved. So we hope from here we'll go to another level continue to engage, especially now that they are going into the budgeting process, so that by the time the 2023-2024 budget comes out, some of these issues have been dealt with. Some may have standalone accounting or sales system. Some may have systems which are provided by some accounting uh, software providers. Examples of systems like Tare, you have you, you, your provider who provides you Tare. Now, if you have such an accounting system provided by a third party provider, those are the ones we call integrators. So we don't have to deal with you directly, we'll deal with your uh, accounting package uh, provider who will do the integration. And that is where the element of delays or these people being overwhelmed comes in because you find one provider 
supplying a hundred. So when you called him to integrate for you, he says, I'm still busy and I'm coming. So what is the take point, the take uh, home for us as URA? Is to engage the integrators, know the system load that they have, and agree on the scheduling of bringing people onto IFRIS. I'm very happy that a comment came from some of you that IFRIS is a good system. How good is IFRIS going to be going forward? When we have all come on IFRIS and we have sorted out the current path pins of starting this solution, IFRIS will take away the monthly returns because you can automatically file the return through IFRIS, at least for purposes of VAT. Isn't that a benefit to you? So shouldn't we embrace IFRIS? IFRIS is a good solution. And it's one of those solutions that we really would like to seek your cooperation. We are mindful of the fact that anything new starts with a bit of challenges. So let's bear with one another as we face the initial challenges of either not knowing how to use the system properly or of the system being slow or the internet being off. There are challenges around that and those are of a technical nature and we'll address them as they come up. But the principle is, IFRIS is good. IFRIS will create a level playing field for every taxpayer. IFRIS will ease the burden of filing on the side of taxpayers. It will improve transparency. And whatever problem is there, let's raise it. We've been engaging sectors on the issue of IFRIS. The manufacturers have a different challenge. Those in certain sectors of telecoms have a different challenge, and we've been engaging and listening. The supermarkets have a different challenge. When we listen, we solve those problems. When we listen, we solve those problems. Now, my concern is that out of a membership of 453 members of the Uganda Hotel Owners Association, only 74 have adopted IFRIS on a system to system. That is about 16%. That uptake is so low. We need to agree, by the time we leave this meeting room, that for everyone who really wants transparency, and you are able not to assume certain taxes without a basis, we get on IFRIS. Because IFRIS will give us real-time data, and there will be no room for us to assume anything, because we'll be seeing yourselves on real-time basis. That is my comment about IFRIS. My commissioner IT is here, is the man driving that integration process, the engagement with different stakeholders. He will add some comments on IFRIS for clarity where there is need. I agree with an issue that the training may not have been enough. I think during the lockdown, we engaged through uh, training on, uh, online. Can we now work out a program for training hotel owners associations, the actual people who manage these hotels, maybe we, we organize regional trainings, we take it near, we make it physical one-on-one, -on -one, and we train on IFRIS, because IFRIS will make us all benefit, and let's embrace it. That is my comment on IFRIS. General and the fellow investors, I think we might be prostituting the wrong people. We are telling the Commissioner General of URA to do things which I think might be impossible. What we should be doing, we should be calling him to join us. He's our partner. Join us to change bad laws. When I was growing up as a child, there was a bad law capitation law, which was known as poll tax, or where they used to round up unemployed people in the villages and imprison them for years, simply because they couldn't pay that tax. I always wondered, who did this? And then we had graduates, we had people, but the problem was not the, the Murka chiefs, was not the chiefs of the area, it was to do with the bad law. That bad law was stopped by some of us. And how did we stop it? 
we tackled the right organizations, we tackled the right areas. So, this morning for me, I want to call upon the Commissioner General, Minister of Finance, our partners, to join us and remove laws that are not practical. This law is impossible. This law undermines development. I have been at it, I would say, alone, maybe my organization alone, because me, I have, I have been to the tax tribunal over this law. Uh, even before I go further, I want to, uh, to remind the uh, Commissioner General that uh, we have got a tribunal in place which is supposed to be uh, an arbitrator in these matters of tax. This is where the harassment comes in. You go to the arbitrator, when you lose, you pay. When you win, they appeal. Harassment. This is wrong. And this harassment, we can direct it to the man on top. But there are bad people in every organization. There are people in this organization of whether finance or, uh, or URA that use bad law to sterilize taxpayers. This must be investigated and should be stopped. So, sir, when we go to the tribunal, and the tribunal has decided on your side we pay the tax, when it's in our benefit, your officials appeal. And this is the harassment they were talking about. So, to me, we can sit here and talk until, come, until cows come home. But the best thing to do. I have talked to Council Virunji. Whatever we are asking from the Commissioner General, I can tell you he won't do much if he does not join us. Because what he's doing, he's implementing the law. And he's not going to change the law. That's the system they are telling you. That's what the system tells me. The system is the law. This is a bad law. We must change it. This smart taxation The marble taxation, whoever did the drafting, these are textbook economists. These are people who just, just go in some room and paste and just copy and paste. And they are paid and they move away. It's laziness and it's actually tantamount to criminality. If you look at all these taxes that are subjected to business. You waste so much time fighting for tax when it could have been compounded and put into a single tax. So mine is simple. Commissioner General, please, please join us. Because you are one of us. I can tell you some of your colleagues who were where you are sitting today, today they are sitting with us. Tomorrow you are going to be there. Join us when it's too early, when you can make good changes in organization. So, but I thank you people, I thank you for responding in numbers, and I know most of you, you have something to say, so I'm not going to take your time. But mine, I know that we all need to pay taxes. These taxes are not meant for the Commissioner General, for the President, the, the taxes are for all of us. It, these taxes are, are all of us and are supposed to develop the country that we all belong to. But what we are saying, let's look at the implementation. Let's look at the formula of this tax. Is it practical? I thank you. This is something that again will require a change in law. As you know, it was represented by Rukundo. Um, this had to go to Parliament for, 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 for the law to change and accept those suppliers of government to account for VAT on cash basis. Uh, we have uh, no issue with presenting this for policy change. But the important point to note is how do you confirm payment? Because for government, you know there is IFIMIS. So when you are paid, IFIMIS, where we already integrated, will tell us that payment has happened. So if we can address how we 
monitor the payments between business to business, then we can see how to support that proposal. But it is a policy measure issue. Um, Let me now, um, th there was a specific issue by Mr. Lotik about a tax conflict from 2017. Mr. Lotik, we will go with your contact from here so that we can listen to that issue of Noah's Ark Hotel and we expedite and CDT uh, will help on this front. We, we apologize for such a long dispute. We know how draining it can be and we'll bring it under ADR and see how to resolve it. Um, issues that CDT will comment about quick resolution of credit notes credit notes kept coming up as an issue that is causing pain to our, our taxpayers recognizing returns uh, of only when people have submitted a withholding tax certificate I don't know whether that is accurate, but I believe since we are the ones that issue these certificates, we should have a way of accommodating a return filed even before the certificate. But you can prepare an answer to that. Um, sales with teens are allowed and purchases without teens are disallowed. That you can speak a little about and TCC is being issued only when there is zero balance. I don't know whether this is really true, but if it's true, then it's an anomaly. I don't think we want zero balance to issue TCC. What we want is tax compliance, because TCC is a confirmation that you're a compliant taxpayer, okay? And a compliant taxpayer does not have to have zero balance. A compliant taxpayer will have filed and paid his taxes as expected. He will not be having uh, tax arrears. So arrears does not mean what you have filed this month. Uh, arrears would relate to a period that has passed, probably the previous month or even previous year. So we try as much as possible to confirm that someone is tax compliant before we issue the TCC. But again, because we are mindful that TCC is there to facilitate business, we have been trying as much as possible to enable people compete for business even before they fully sort out. So when you come to us and you say, I'm not tax compliant, first of all, you should get a TCC automatically online if you're compliant. You should apply for it and receive it in your mail without you coming. But should you have a tax issue with us, like those ledgers that have a balance, then that's when you engage us and you say, uh, this ledger balance is not correct. So in that circumstance, what we request of you is to say, let's reconcile. If I have tax that is outstanding, I'll pay it. But in the meantime, we'll give you a TCC so that you can compete. When you win that business, you will have capacity to pay taxes. So we have been using it as a measure of checking compliance, but we have also been allowing people to have TCCs uh, even when, before they settle their, their, their outstandings, because sometimes outstandings are not easy to settle immediately. But uh, CDT, again, you can add your point to that. Um, now, there were other general comments. Financial harassment. Thank you so much, Margaret, for bringing up this issue. It is one of the areas where we have committed ourselves. These are the core values that we stand for. And we put them in writing so that you can criticize us on them. And I liked it when Mr. Birunji said integrity, when you do certain things is lacking. We, we were bold on this, Mr. Birunji, so that we work towards that. It's not going to be an overnight step. But as an organization, as a leadership of this organization, we want to commit to you. We will serve you with integrity. So anybody who asks for some money to help cover some liability. And it comes up after two years, after they've changed the team, the scenario that Margaret was explaining is very unfortunate. Now help us as our partners. Anybody who asks for money, tell him the only money I will pay is money to government and I will receive a receipt for it. Okay? 
So don't accept anyone who lies to you that he can take away your liability. Because the area we are taking, which I spoke about earlier, of IT, data and information does not lie. This man will lie to you and he will go to the system and delete your tax, but there will be a trail. When we discover it, we will recover that tax from you and whatever you pay to this, uh, this, this corrupt person will be wasted. So please, as an organization, we are trying to fight corruption. Corruption can only succeed when two parties agree to it. Don't give us bribes. Don't entertain our requests for bribes. Let's work together to fight corruption. Because we've been given a very secret task to collect revenue for national development. If we approach that assignment and still have leakages through our hands, we will not go far. So I want to appeal to you that we'll fight corruption. We are committed to exercise integrity. These are the core values that we stand for as an organization. Meet us halfway. Resist any attempt for anybody to get any money from you. Otherwise, you'll end up paying double. They will conceal this liability today, and it will come up tomorrow. When it comes up, don't say, I paid, unless if you paid to government, and you paid in the bank, and you got a receipt for payment. Otherwise, any money paid outside that arrangement is potea, money lost, and without any benefit. So the issue of penalties being too heavy is another issue that was raised. But penalties can be avoided. Why penalties are heavy? First of all, penalties are spelled out in the law. Arbitrary Commissioner General or Commissioner cannot say you will pay 20 million as a fine. That must be well spelled out in the law. But the thinking behind the law was avoid, discourage the practice of people breaking the law. When they do it, then they are penalized. I fully agree with the notion that before people are penalized, they should be engaged, they should be sensitized. But we do not have much discretion to vary the penalty amounts. They are heavy in nature because that is the intention that they are created to do, to cause deterrence for people to avoid. I think I've already spoken about some of the other issues. I will now uh, invite my colleagues to deepen some of these. There was an issue by Andrew, a team, talking about the integrator's fee. Now, as I explained IFRIS earlier, Andrew, IFRIS, you only deal with an integrator if that is uh, the system you have in your business. You are dealing with an accounting package that you need this person to integrate. And I don't know whether 1.7 is uh, a negotiable fee, but I think where there is demand for much business, this fee could also come down. Remember, the other person who has a system will not pay uh, for anything additional, except maybe also he may have his developers to do the interface between our system and theirs. And someone who has no system at all will also pay for a little handheld device. We call them EFDs, electronic physical devices. They also cost about that much so that we can still get them on IFRIS. So I, I don't want to commit that we have a budget to pay this fee for the taxpayers, but we have started with VAT registered taxpayers, and there's a threshold for VAT. So I believe out of your businesses, you should be able to save some money to do this integration. It is a requirement by the law, and you should mobilize to meet this cost. Um, let me first allow my colleagues to come and as a way forward, I will summarize some of the points they bring up. Please, uh, Sarah.